For this next part of the lecture, we're going to look at cave and car systems. What are cave and car systems? Well, let's take a look at some of the slides here. So you can see some very exciting things. Uh, these are your caves. They can be quite spectacular. Often they're found in holding crowds. Some of these, we don't know where they are until somebody just happens to get unlucky with a backhoe. Great example is where I went to college um, at the Santa Cruz Earth Marine Sciences Building. They literally drilled several, they knew this, that the rock in that region was notorious for a cavern formation. So they drilled about six test holes and found solid rock underneath all of them, said, well, probably safe to put a building here. It was only when they were about maybe a third of the way through construction to where um, it, they would have had horrible cost overruns if they'd uh, tried to stop and recite that they noticed that the only places where the ground was actually solid were in those exact places where they drilled those six test holes to test the contents of the underlying rock. And that the rest of the subsurface was kind of this, had quite a bit of void space. So we're gonna learn how caves form. Um, we're gonna learn about the role of dissolution in porosity and permeability in the movement of water. We're gonna learn how cavern systems evolve. We're gonna learn about like, yeah, why this place that what? And what they turn into in the sort of end game for what we call karst landscapes. So let's take a look at how some of these uh, karst systems form. So we're looking here on this graphic here. Uh, we have this, this is a cross section of a limestone area, area of an area of uh, some kind of limestone, maybe marble, maybe some, just some kind of rock that um, clearly dissolves fairly readily. So, and these gutter lines are fractures. Fractures in the rock. So, um, so remember during our lectures on chemical weathering, rainwater contains quite a bit of CO2. So So as the rainwater falls down on the earth, it picks up carbon dioxide. Forms carbonic acid. Now, when you take limestone and react with carbonic acid, you're going to slowly dissolve it. But always the rainwater get a little more acidic as it goes on the ground. Yeah. Yeah, then the water actually gets a little more acidic as it goes deeper into the ground. So what'll start to happen is it'll flow down these fractures and slowly start dissolving away at the fractures. So initially, you'll start off with a fairly high sort of your primary source of porosity, the little pores in the limestone and the fractures of your primary source of porosity. starts to, um, what happens is the carbonic acid and starts to eat them away. It's the way. As this water starts to eat away these uh, pore spaces, somewhere below the water table, you're going to start to get the formation of larger and larger voids. Start getting the formation of larger and larger voids. Voids. And these voids are typically first going to enlarge along the uh, along the fractures where there's more flow, more movement of this acidic water. You get more and more movement along these voids, you start to form 
larger and larger empty spaces. That the formation of larger empty spaces you're going to get greater permeability and that more permeable stuff that permeability is going to lower your water table. Water table. And now, now you're starting to see some void spaces eaten out in the rock. So water table is going to fall. You're going to see the caves forming along the fractures as they form caves along the fractures. Now, it is possible for the water table to rise again. If the, we see this happen every year in Southeast Asia, the, there's lots of limestone, but limestone and the water table sort of rise and fall with the seasonal rains. We get this system of caverns and void spaces that form as the water has dissolved out caves. Now there's still existing fractures, there's still water going down those fractures. So you'll start to get some interesting features like, uh, okay, we're using the rainbow pin this time. You'll get stalactites where water starts dripping down through these fractures and uh, forms these large hanging things that look like icebergs this way. The bottom of the cave, water as carbon dioxide are releases and the uh, calcite precipitates, they got little stalag mites. These will all look like teeth. So now I'm gonna show you some pictures from Mitchell Caverns in Southern California's Providence Mountains, about halfway between Barstow and Needles. So look closely, you can see all these stalactites that have formed from calcite precipitating on the ceiling. Um, are all lining up in a nice row with one another and lining up beautifully for the fracture. In fact, I can find it. You can actually see there's quite a number of fractures in this cavern. Sorry, the uh, quality wasn't the best, but you can see in several places that, yes, these stalactites line up almost perfectly with notable fractures in the ceiling of this cavern. Oh, there we go, that, we got it good there. Really good one where I can really see the uh, shape of the cavern. I'm not seeing it very well here yet, but. There we go. Yeah, I can kind of see in this picture, there's kind of this like clearly well-defined sort of vertical crack that this cavern formed within. And then there's cr smaller cracks that are allowing water to sort of percolate down and uh, the uh, stalactites and stalagmites are connected to these. And then every now and then when these connect, forming a full-fledged column. Over time, as your uh, system evolves, You'll get more and more of these caverns in your rock, and the land surface will have less and less pulling it up. And eventually, as these cavern spaces get too close to the surface, you're going to get a uh, sinkhole. Now, sinkhole, the ground has literally opened up and the cavern is now basically exposed to the sky. And over time, we'll get more and more of these sinkholes. You'll start seeing these sinkholes connect up to each other. What does this look like in a... in the real world? Well, first, this is a beautiful sinkhole in China. At one point, this was a large cavern, but eventually the roof collapsed. Now you have this narrow valley with super steep sides. We sometimes call these 
karst gullies. Move myself out of here. I don't feel like I'm about to fall into a cave if I move it out of the way. Um, and eventually, what'll, after many, many years of this kind of dissolution of the landscape, all we'll be left are, you know, all these sort of sinkholes will connect with each other, and all we'll be left are a couple of these steep walls. This is what gives you these uh, pinnacle formations that you see in parts of China that were originally when people saw these uh, in Europe, they thought people were just exaggerating, but no. And of course, we got caves and sinkholes in uh, other parts of the world. This is Florida. Um, this is where you'd expect to see Florida man emerging from up above. I'm going to guess this fact that this happened directly on our house had something to do with our septic system. Never sure. Be careful what you flush, I guess, is the uh, uh, more moral of the story. Um, we also get, um, but you don't need limestone or marble to get cave and car systems. You just need a sequence where you have multiple forms of permeability, where you have permeability stored between grains, where you have conduits, where you have little boundaries, little cracks that things can flow through. Um, and you need places where the recharge is focused. So in cave and car systems, this is going to be sinkholes and stuff like that. But go to a little Google Earth here. Google Earth, go to Texas. We can see also that you can get um, car springs. Well, uh, give you a very focused recharge. Let's head over to Austin, place that I spent a lot of good time at one point in my life. And see if we can find some evidence for uh, cave systems opening up. All that in this area. Um, by the way, you have to be very careful where you bet, build around here because this already does have lots of it. Oh, good. We got a lot of flow in the creek. Wow, this was during a very wet year when this picture was taken. Might not be able to find much in here. So look at this creek. I want, we're about to come to, uh, let's see, where is it? Wind Falls. Oh, yeah, right here. So look right here, generally in this spot, I've been rafting here, the uh, flow of the creek is usually noticeably less below this point right here compared to where it is upstream. So one of the things you see in car systems is something we call focused recharge. There'll be a couple very discrete places where the water is clearly uh, going into the ground and everywhere else pretty much just, it's not getting ground anywhere but there. So in these areas, there's uh, extensive efforts underway to guard the uh, guard those recharge points. You can kind of see it down here that yes, the creek is quite a bit drier in this area. Then you also have focus points of discharge. So you go from basically a nearly dry creek suddenly, oh wow, it's things like gushing. And you do that in almost uh, in very little space and the water will just, in Oh, this is really wet year. I'm kind of shocked by this. So the point being that um, point being that you can get this not only in limestone systems, also urban areas. This is Aero Drive here in San Diego. Turns out urban areas, you pave over the landscape, you get um, focused recharge in storm drains, you have pipes, water mains, sewer mains. Um, you have water stored in the gravels beneath the roadbed. You have little cracks forming a roadbed. And all these kind of work together to when you get a little leak in the system, sometimes you can rapidly create a dissolution landscape and get these giant sinkholes opening up just like that. We had one open up at the beginning of 2019 um, right off the 805 freeway at Base College Drive. Good times. That about sums up all we got from groundwater. Um, We'll go into the next lecture talking a little about glaciers and then finally coastal processes.